Hello and welcome to the module on environment laws and the regulation of mining sector in India. Mines have been operational in India since the pre-independence period, especially in sectors like coal, iron ore and other minerals like bauxite. Many public sector undertakings post-independence have been involved in mi mining operations. In recent times, private sector has also invested in and is, is carrying out mining operations. Uh, in the mining sector, a major thrust area is towards servicing industrial expansion, economic growth and energy security in the country. The National Mineral Policy of 2008 seeks to achieve goals related to large-scale prospecting of minerals and large investments which according to the policy are required to be implemented through latest technologies. There are statistics available in the Indian Minerals Yearbook 2012, which are part of this module. However, this sector on mining, like many other sectors, is regulated by a range of laws which relate to allocation of mining areas and leases, ensuring na the national use of mines, overseeing the land acquisition, as well as the rehabilitation proceedings. What is of interest to us in this module is also the environmental and social implications of mining uh, and, and the laws that regulate my, the mining sector. This is because each time land is converted for mining, either for iron ore, bauxite or coal or sand, or sand mining along rivers uh, or beaches, there are, there are social and ecological consequences. It's only bearing this in mind that several legislations over a period of time have emerged that regulate the mining sector. These are, uh, especially those which are uh, of, of environmental in nature, they are under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change. The next slide actually shows you glimpses of uh, different kinds of mining operations, coal mines, iron ore mines, mining over dumps, what an entrance to an underground mine looks like. This is important to understand the, the, the ecological and social impacts that the mining sector can have. And that's why it needs to be regulated. The learning outcomes of this module actually include uh, understanding uh, three specific environmental regulations and laws. First, relate to environmental approvals under the Environment Impact Assessment Notification, Forest Diversion Approvals under the Forest Conservation Act, and approvals to use of protected areas for wildlife if they are need to be opened up for mining under the Wildlife Protection Act. We move on to looking at environment and forest laws related to mining. The first, as mentioned earlier, is the environment impact assessment notification and approvals. The procedure under the EIA notification, which has been issued under the Environment Protection Act, basically categorizes mining into category A and category B projects. Category A projects require approval from the Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change. These are mostly mines, which are more than 50 hectares of mining lease area. Uh, category B projects are basically those which require approval from the state environment impact assessment authorities. These are mining operations up to 50 hectares of mining lease area. So those which are above 50 hectares go to the Ministry of Environment and Forest. Those under 50 hectares go to the, minister, or to the state impact assessment authority, environment impact assessment authority. This is important to know that where, where do you actually locate mining operations and how do you track the approval in case you want to do so, either whether if, even if it means whether you are applying for a mining approval or also want to check if a mine operation around you is operating without or with or without um, an approval. The EI notification, as mentioned earlier, is issued under the Environment Protection Act and requires all mining operations to at least follow four stages. The first two stages relate to the preparation of the Environment Impact Assessment Report based on a terms of reference that has been granted to the mine, depending on whether it's Category A and Category B. It is either the Ministry of Environment and Forest and its expert committee or the State Impact Assessment Authority which will grant the mining uh, the terms of reference. Followed by the EIA, uh, the, uh, any mining project would need to go through a public consultation phase of significant component of that is a public hearing. 
followed by the public hearing and the finalization of the Environment Impact Assessment Report based on the feedback received at the time of the public hearing, an appraisal is carried out by the Mining Related Expert Committee. At the Ministry of Environment Forest for Category A projects, there are separate uh, um, approval agencies and uh, appraisal agencies for both coal mining projects and as well as other mining projects. So if you're a coal mining project, you, you, you will be appraised by the Coal Mining Expert Committee. If you are uh, any other mining like bauxite or iron ore, it will go to the specific committee on mining. This slide here actually shows images of uh, public hearings and how, how they are conducted, an image of what an environment impact assessment look, as a report would look like with a table of contents to, for you to understand the kinds of issues that get covered in this, uh, in this document. However, in, in, in recent times, while this procedure is clearly laid out in the Environment Impact Assessment Notification, there are also recent exceptions and changes that have, been come, up, that have come about through circulars, um, office memorandums or clarifications issued by the Ministry of Environment for us. Here we list three of these. For instance, on, on the 22nd of, uh, 27th of uh, February 2012, the Supreme Court actually ordered that all mining leases, even under, the, in, under 5 hectares, will also require environmental clearance. This is important because till this order was issued, uh, all mining uh, the Category B projects were actually uh, basically between 5 hectares and 50 hectares. Uh, as, you, as I mentioned earlier, now all mines under 50 hectares would require an environmental clearance as Category B project. Subsequent to this, uh, the Ministry of Environment and Forest actually in, in May of 2012 issued a clarification related to this. Uh, the second exception to recent change refers to riverbed sand mining under 5 hectares. Uh, and it is very clearly, uh, you know, through an office, office memorandum mentioned that all leases between 5 and 50 hectares will be considered as Category B2 projects. This is important because uh, all category B projects which are approved and appraised at the, at the state level can either be categorized as B1 or B2 depending on not whether, whether, whether or not they require an environmental clearance, uh, environment impact assessment or uh, and public hearing or not. All category B1 projects would need to go through uh, an EIA and public hearing, B2 are exempt. Uh, there are specific guidelines issued by the Ministry of Environment Forests related to this, which also apply to the to mining projects. Uh, the third exception and recent change is important also because um, since 2012, several um, office memorandums have been issued for exempting one-time expansion of coal mines over 16 MTPA. Uh, in recently, uh, very very recently, basically after the new government was formed. There is another office memorandum which has been issued that public hearing uh, can be done away with. Can be, can, there is an exception for public hearing which has emerged and can be done away with for all mining, coal mining operations or if they are expanding above 16 MTPA capacity. This is of course if the expert appraisal committee uh, has to, they actually have to um, exercise due diligence while taking a decision and to see which mines should be exempted and which mine should not be and they should be also satisfied that this mine has actually complied with all the clearance conditions that have been stipulated in prior to the expansion taking place. Uh, importantly to understand the environment impact assessment notification clearly lays down the validity of a mining approval which is a maximum of 30 years to start the production operations in a mine. Uh, there is also very clearly stipulated clauses for post clearance monitoring all mining operations like other projects have to submit six monthly compliance reports with the Ministry of Environment Forest regional office closest to them and these regional offices also carry out monitoring every six months. Recently, powers have also been given to state impact assessment authorities to monitor the, uh, the, the compliance of conditions for even category A mining. So this completes the section on environment impact assessments. Uh, we move on to 